Here's a nice way to do that. If you ever want to change something to a fraction, woo, okay. It's way over there. So guys, here's the funny thing. If you have like a, uh, wow, that is remarkably dead. If you have like 0.01%, and you know that percent means per hundred, that is not a fraction. A fraction is defined to be the ratio of two whole numbers. Right. So the really nice thing is, if you got to move the top over how many times? Once, twice. You just move the bottom over twice. Yeah. Because really, if I move the top twice, I multiplied it by 100. Whatever you do to the top of a fraction, you have to do to the bottom of a fraction. So right. Now, the better way to go would actually be to take this to a pure decimal, right? Move it back twice. Decimal percent. It's a percent, so I've got to move it back. And what place is that in? Tens, tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousands. So it's one ten thousandth, because that's the place it's in. Cool. So that would be fractional. Yeah. Okay. So be careful. You can't leave 0 0.2 over 100. You can't leave it like that. That's not a fraction. Yet. That's a weird hybrid mutant fraction. Yeah. <laughs> So can you use 19 on 1.4 and you still have it? Which one? 19 on 1.4, the one I asked you earlier. 19? Yeah. 19. I was looking at 16, was it 19? Uh, it's 19. I just couldn't find the formula. Oh, that's a pyramid. So it's one third. All right, so for a pyramid, I'm pretty sure we did that one in class. This kind of a pyramid here. You didn't really go over. So it was 11 by 11? Yeah. And the height was 13? Yeah. yeah. So the volume of a pyramid is one third the area of the base times the height. Okay. Right? Big old B is the area of the base. And the area of the base is nice. It's a nice square. It just looks that way because we're looking at it from the side, right? Mm -hmm. So it's square, and the height they gave me is 13. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what would, so what would I do with the big B again? The big B is the area of the base, okay. and the base is a square. Cool. So that's the area of um, the volume of any pyramid. The area of the base times the height. That would be the thing that I cut the pyramid out of. So I got to take one third of that to make it just the pyramid piece. So it's 11 times 13. Well, what's the area of the base? 11 times 11. Uh, so 121 goes there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't kid around. So is it one third multiplied by the base, right? Uh, yeah, one third of the area of the base times the height. So one third times one divided by three multiplied by b multiplied by a. U. Okay. Any other questions from homework? Um, number 25. I had a really hard time. Like, because I kept coming up with the the spheres being like a way bigger number than a so then I don't realize that. Freakiness. Um, so you've got this kind of thing with spheres cut out of it. It's not too bad. It's not too good either, but anyway. So 6.9 and this is 7. It's all right. It's all right. All right, thanks. <laughs> So the volume of the, the whole cylinder, before you cut the spheres out, <coughs> thankfully you don't have to worry about how to cut those spheres out. The volume of the cylinder would be, remember that's that big B times H, right? And the area of the base is a circle, so it's pi r squared for the area of the base times the height. And what's the radius? 3.5. 3.5. So that's the volume of the whole thing. <coughs> now, if I do one sphere, I could just multiply that volume by three, three because there's three of them. So the volume of one sphere, what's the volume of a sphere? Four thirds. Four thirds. Four thirds. Four thirds. Pi r cubed. Cube. Volume has got to be cubic. Oh. 
What's the radius of a circle? 3.45. Yeah, 3.45. Yeah, so when you multiply that by 3, you can actually just do 4 times pi times this cubed, because multiply by 3, that 3 will cancel, right? Or just get this number and multiply by 3. Now, it's a good point. If that number comes out bigger than that number, that's freaky. You're trying to cut out of something more than is there. If you can do that, that's neat. But you can't. All right, so I agree with you. Do you see what, do you see anything that went wrong? Did you do that? Well, you can just put it all in at once. You can do 4 divided by 3 times pi times 3.45 to the third power. Okay. You can put it in it all at once. Okay. Yeah, that'll keep it straight. When you start doing it in pieces parts, that's where you might start making mistakes. If you have a scientific or graphing calculator, you should be able to put it in it all at once. Okay. Make this a lot easier, yeah. Okay. Any other questions about for size? Yeah. On the, this is on section five point seven. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just gonna pick the one that's kind of like it, but the number twenty-seven. How do you figure out how to make? This and I'm just picking the one with the fractions because it seems to be the harder one. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The nice thing about that one. Um, but the nice thing with the homework is they tell you what kind of sequence it is. What would suck with this one is if you didn't know what kind of sequence it was. But real quick, if you thought... Uh, 27 on 27. section 5.7. 5.7. Why is it definitely not geometric? And what is geometric built on? What operation? Multiplication. Multiplication. Uh, right. One fourth times what is one? Four. And if you multiply by four again, do I get what I'm supposed to get? No, mm -hmm. right? Well, one times four is not seven fourths. So I can eliminate it being geometric. But of course, in this homework set, they already tell you in the instructions, determine the sum of the terms of the arithmetic sequence. So I already knew it was arithmetic. Arithmetic's built on addition. One fourth plus what is one? Three fourths. Three fourths, yeah. So that's my D. Double check it. What's 1 plus 3 fourths? 4 fourths plus 3 fourths, 7 fourths. Check, because that's what I got. Right. So then I know that D must be 3 fourths. Because every step you take, it goes up by 3 fourths. So remember, the whole purpose of these is no matter what form they give it to you, I want to know what A1 is. I want to know what D is for arithmetic sequences. And then I want to know what their, you know, I can figure out what AN is. And then I can figure out whatever term they want me to, right? So A1 here is uh, one fourth. fourth, the first term. D we just figured out was three fourths. Three fourths. AN in general is A1 plus N minus one times D. That's a formula you can have on your formula sheet, right? So A1 was one fourth plus N minus 1, I don't know what N is yet, right? No. They, they haven't told me any specific N. Times D, 3 fourths. And here they ask you for, oh, well they ask you for the sum. So this is like a side note. Why might we need this though? They ask me for the sum of this up to, where to go? No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the next section. Make that more than easy. This is all they ask for in that section. The next section they want the sum. This is all they want, just the a n. So I'm done. Now notice some of you guys are doing this where you can distribute that through and put that the, your like terms together. So you can do that or not. I don't. I don't care either way. Cool. Yeah. Now I did that formula, and that's the first thing I put down. But when I double checked in the back. It gave me the formula. Oh, a yeah, definitely. In the, the back, I think they do this. So, no, but it gives me instead of n minus 1 for the formula, it's n minus 1 half. No, so I think, no, no, here's what they did. 1 fourth plus distribute the 3 fourths through. 
Okay. Right? And one fourth minus three fourths is negative two fourths, which is negative one half. Okay. So the back of the book is going to take this and go further. Personally, for me, you can stop there or go further either way. But obviously, to check your work, you would have to keep going. Yeah. What's another way to check your work? What should A3 be? 7 fourths. So if you plug a 3 in, you better get 7 fourths. Right? Would you mind showing us that example? Just plug that in for you. Oh, for 3? Yeah. Alright, well, A n is 1 fourth plus n minus 1 times 3 fourths, right? So what am I going to have? A3, where am I going to put that 3? Where the n is. Beautiful. Where the n is. Whenever I ask a question, get a little worried somebody's going to tell me. So, okay, I'll tell you where you put that three. Oh, what does the three represent? The A, the A3, what does that represent? You tell me. Why was A114? Because A1 represents oh, a, the a, okay, so A3 the first represents term. Seven, so what's A3 represent? Seven the, fourths. What does A3 represent? Seven fourths. The third term. The third term. Beautiful. Which is seven fourths, I agree, but in general it's a the third, third term. term. Okay. Alright, cool. So that's a way to check yourself. Once you get this. Just take a random term and make sure that that formula actually gives it to you. So the n then represents the third term minus one. Yeah. All right, three minus one is two. So two times three fourths is six fourths. Four, six fourths. And which is one fourth plus six fourths? Seven fourths. Four. Thank God. So I feel good about this equation. Right? It did give me what it was supposed to give me. Yeah. This one? 